So the buttock has been halfway missing on the Fiat 500E for quite some time, since the middle of the winter. And I'm trying to look here. Looks like it's just a single 10 mil fastener. And then we've got a little Phillips clip on the end here. And that's pretty much all that's still holding this thing on. I'm guessing that one probably rattled out and that gave it enough play just to snap off over the winter. But I have a new used buttock from California. Uh, you do have to be careful when you're ordering these. They are sold in white and black for the two different color combos. So make sure you order according. If you, uh, if you buy a new one, they aren't painted. I don't know if that means they're just gray plastic or what. Um, but either way, I'm gonna swap that on because I gotta finish cleaning this thing out and uh, get it sold on to the next owner here. Uh, just so I have a little bit more room to play with uh, other cars. So still kind of haven't decided if I'm gonna like take the trailer hitch off, take the lowering springs out, you know, re revert it to stock basically. I don't think I'm going to, but it's, it's a possibility. Yay, not as poverty anymore. Got the old front license plate bracket I never used, TomTom, -tom. got the charger back under the back, and the cargo parcel cover. However, I'm dumb and forgot the headrests at home. But this thing is, oh, and the dash cam is removed. But pretty much stock, except for the paint pen. And you know, the TomTom -tom is stock, but obviously I had to buy one. And of course I even saved the dumb acoustic engine cover. So I put that back on, or sorry, motor cover. Um, but yeah, other than HID ballasts and the relay up here for the light bar, still stock. Poor little Fiat, I wish I had space to keep this thing, it's a bunch of fun. Well, last week I was telling you guys about projects. The M5 is definitely one, pretty nice car. Um, I'm sure you've been watching along the whole way I've had it, which isn't very long, but pretty low miles. Um, overall really, really clean first year it's a 2000 uh, but it's got a few things that are just kind of stupid this lower carbon fiber valance thing which if i can get to staple back up there maybe i'll keep it's not that offensive but those mufflers are terrible and there's a section in the lead pipe about right here it's just cut out so i found these uh factory takeoffs really low miles actually i, I got them from a local company here about five years ago when i used to run recycle bmws uh, BMW specific salvage yard and they were still there in the inventory so I just bought those back um, brakes I believe I have all four corners I did find independently two really nice early M5 headlights so that should be nice control arms thrust arms a bunch of little stuff I can't even remember uh, brand new set of floor mats OE so there's a lot of stuff to do here uh, I'm actually going to take this car out and go get some gas in it because it's extremely low. Um, oh, and this M5 badge. There's a new one of those in the trunk as well. But I'm noticing this tire is completely flat, which is really lame. So uh, I don't think I have a nozzle for that. I'm going to go grab my little Fiat air compressor, my little VDO, pump that thing up, and we'll get it out of the garage and get some fuel in it. Hopefully we make it to the gas station. It's really low. Tires pumped up, trickle charger is off, clear enough, hopefully run, and I moved the Tesla. So I'm trying to get this thing out of here. Oh, that's right, that one's power fold. <laughs> All right. Got a little bit of an empty lifter there, it sounds like. What's our range? Nine miles. Plenty. All right, let me open up the garage door and let's try getting this thing out of here. We made it. First time this car has been outside since November. And uh, both of the mirrors power folding are now working, even though this one used to be the only one that was working. So not sure if I just somehow re-engaged it, but uh, let's go get some gas. Well, we made it there. The range actually went up as I drove, which is a little surprising. Yeah, just look at that. Ugh, it's so dumb, can't believe it. Um, yeah, the needs for this car underneath are actually pretty minimal. 
Uh, I showed you guys those mufflers a little bit earlier. I think they're cut right around here. So I'm hoping I can just get a couple of band clamps. Just cut these off. I believe it's just 13 mils holding them on. So it's actually pretty, pretty easy. And then this splitter, I just don't know. I think it's probably too borked to keep and I would prefer an original. Oh yeah, rear brake lines are quite well perished. I do have new ones of those. Oh wow, I didn't see the uh, DSC sensor wire. It was so, so bad on both sides. That's unfortunate. I do for sure have the uh, brake hoses though. Um, what else? Ooh, it's toasty under here. Fancy. Uh, no CDV, that's good. I don't think I'm gonna change the trans oil. I feel like that's already been done. It drives really well. I do have thrust arms and control arms. Control arms actually feel really good. Really good. Thrust arms are bad. Shocker, every E39, I swear, has got bad thrust arms. But just look how dry this thing is. It's so nice. I do have a teeny tiny little oil drip there. Hopefully not from the rear main. Uh, but it looks like it's from the rear main. <laughs> Uh, I can live with that. Throw some of that uh, Liquid Molly 2020 in there and drive it around this season. Um, yeah, most of, most of the stuff this car needs is topside. Front hoses look okay. Uh, it does have an odd DSC issue where once you start it, it's fine. Drive it a little bit, uh, then the, the triage of, or trio of lights come on and the pedal's a little spongy at the top. So I'm guessing it's a rear brake issue. I don't know if it's bleed or if these lines are swollen. But either way, I think it's a brake pressure issue. So we'll sort that out and hopefully this thing will be solid by the end of the year. Oh, maybe it wasn't a ticking lifter. It was a broken exhaust bolt. I'll have to replace that. Unfortunately, that looks like it is a stud. So that's gonna be air hammer time. Ugh, hate people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna take the 1M for a scoot just for fun. It's one of two pretty easily accessible cars right now, so why not? Very, very fine. Yes. Sport mode. Some ice. I don't have an app for this garage door yet. Look how pretty that R129 is though. Mmm. Sexy. Alright. So, the back of the M5. I've got a few things I certainly need to do. There's some tape residue, and there's a nasty M5 badge. Those are kind of the first and foremost things for me. So, what I've done is I've sprayed some of this industrial vinyl remover on the tape and on the badge itself. I'm gonna plug in my heat gun and uh, start going over that little by little. I'm gonna try to get behind it really, really carefully without damaging the paint. Just get this thing off of here because it just looks so terrible and I've got brand new badges right here. May as well. Well, so far that was really quick. I don't think this was held on with factory adhesive. Um, I've got more of that vinyl cleaner on there. Just going at it with my fingernail. It's coming off pretty nice. So I'm just gonna get this as clean as I can. Then I'm gonna get some tape and line up where it should be, because I believe it is actually in the right place. Um, and it's still a little warm from the heat gun too, which is great. So I'm just, like I said, gonna pick that off, get the uh, new location all set up. Make sure the new badge goes back on in the correct place, because I don't want this car to look janky. Spending all this money to make it look nice. Yeah, no. So let me do that and I'll, uh, I'll come back before I slap the new badge on with you guys here. This is not an easy job. I'm soaking the ever-living bejesus out of what I assume is masking tape. Don't ask me why. Uh, and I've got the bulk of the old M5 off. I still have a little bit there, which I'm gonna use as my pattern. I do still have to get some tape just to make sure it's level. Uh, and there, there's our shitty old badge set. So yeah, time to throw on the new ones and then work on the masking tape. So there is our go zone for the M and the five. 
I'm gonna try not to screw this up because these badges may not look like much, but I think these were like almost $90 together or something crazy like that. So here we go. I swear it's the little stuff that makes the biggest differences. That is just a beauty. Makes the car look so much less poverty. Well, it isn't perfect, but it is, oops, fat fingered it. Not perfect, but substantially better. Um, this is still, you can feel it a little bit. There was actually some up here, some up here, a little bit down here. And then of course the new badge. The car is obviously pretty dirty from just having driven it so much. Uh, back from Texas, and it hasn't been washed since, I don't think, but uh, a definite improvement. I've still got a trunk full of goodies for this thing, but these were bothering me because I saw them every time I looked at the car. So many goodies. We got visors where nobody's tried to pick the airbag warnings off. It's a bummer because my visors are actually in pretty good shape other than that, so. Now I've got the rear brake hoses. Maybe I'll do those right now. I've got a passenger front door latch assembly. Again, that good used pair of headlights. Spark plugs, uh, I've got O-rings for um, the thermostat housing. I've got a thermostat. What else, brakes, thrust arms, floor mats. <laughs> a whole, whole bunch. In due time, in due time. Well, this thing actually has a brand new brake master cylinder in it that uh, my buddy Brandon put in the car before I picked it up in Texas. However, it didn't fix the brake issue. Um, so since those li uh, lines need to be replaced anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and rip the rear wheels off, uh, get those calipers off, replace the lines, and then attempt to bleed it myself alone. Although I'm guessing, just guessing, this car will require some aggressive pedal pumping from an assistant. So I doubt the brake issue will get fixed today, but at least we'll give it a go. Here we go. So there was that ruined brake line. My uh, whole plan here is to rip the anti rattle clip off, pull the little boots off of our seven millimeter slide pins. Then I'm gonna take my seven mil Allen, back those pins off, and then uh, compress the caliper just a little bit. So um, by doing that, I should be able to pull the caliper off and then I can loosen up these lines and actually twist the uh, caliper off the line and make sure nothing gets super bent up. I am gonna grab a uh, towel or a jug or something to put on the ground because this is going to make a bit of a mess. But uh, yeah, these lines are sure toast. Everything else in here looks kinda like okay. That link doesn't look super great. Oh, you know, I spoke too soon. Most of these actually look like they could use a refresh. Kinda weird considering the car only has like 110,000 miles, but I guess it is 20, Ooh, 21 years old? 21, yeah. I don't know. Somewhere around there. No, shoot, it's 19. It's not eligible for collector yet. I am smart. Anyway, time for that clip, and then I'm going to pull these calipers off. Oh, it's hard to describe just how satisfying new parts are and how disgusting the old ones can be. Uh, the only gripe I have about these Sung Sung, whatever the hell line. So my basic process is get it dangling, crack the line on the caliper, but don't remove it. Then crack this line and just twist the whole thing off. Twist the new line on with the washer as it's dripping. Then next step, make sure this is facing up until you see a bubble of fluid in there. Then go ahead and, oops, sorry. Go ahead and wind the old line out of the caliper facing up and try to leave a good bubble of fluid in there. And then when you see a bubble like that, tilt that line straight down and then hold it in that bubble of fluid until there's no air and then screw it in. 